Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and here's another short video on bare metal programming for Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple subroutine for how to read from the UART. This will help us when we're trying to work with our terminal emulator. So far, we've been able to print stuff to the terminal, but it'd be nice to be able to get characters from the keyboard from the terminal emulator as well. And so that's what we'll do in this video. Before I show you how to read a character from the UART, Let's revisit our UART initialization code. As you may recall, I had a problem with this line here where what I was actually doing was using a 70 decimal instead of a 70 hex. Now I want you to change that value to a 60 hex instead. The 70 hex enables FIFOs, but Let's don't en enable the FIFOs. The code that I'm going to show you will work with FIFOs enabled, so it's not critical that you do this at this point, but for future videos when we want to start working with interrupts and so forth, this would be a reasonable change to make. The design for our read character routine looks something like this. We have two parts. We, in the first part, we sit in a loop waiting for a character to arrive. So we check the UART and see if it has a character yet, and if it doesn't, we branch back to the top of the loop and we just keep doing that until finally a character arrives. Once the character arrives, we fall through into the second part where we get the character by reading the UART's data register, and then we read that into register 2 and return from this subroutine. So it's really a very simple subroutine. Here's the assembly code that implements the design we just discussed. Here's the first loop where we wait for the character. The way we do that is we read the flags register. I'm reading that into register 7. Remember that register 1 contains the base address for the UART, and this offset of 18 is where I find the flags register, 18 hex from the base register R1. Then I check this bit in the flags register. This is the bit that tells me if the UART is empty if its receive buffer is empty. And so I check this bit by anding what I got when I read the flags register. By anding that, it eliminates all the other bits, and then I compare to see if the result is zero. If it's not equal to zero, then I know that the UART is still empty, so I branch back up and I just sit in this loop until finally this bit is not set, which indicates that there is a character present. In other words, when this bit is zero, there's a character present because this bit means that the buffer is empty. At that point, I fall down through here and I go out and I read from the data register, which remember R1 is the base register for the UART and zero offset from that is the data register. And so the base address and the data register are the same. And so I read that character into R2, which by the way empties the buffer that I would be checking up here. And then I strip off the four high bits. They aren't really useful to us and we just keep the eight data bits, the low order data bits, and we stick that into register 2, which is where we're going to return, and then we return from our subroutine. Finally, you can use this read character routine in an echo loop, which I've shown here. You'll see that this loop is very simple. It just reads a character. Remember that read character leaves that character in register 2, and write character prints the character out, which is in register 2, conveniently enough. And then we just branch back up and sit here in this loop, waiting for characters, and whenever a user types character, we write it back out to the terminal. So it's a pretty simple loop, but it allows us to test our read character code to make sure that it works. And it's pretty important that we get comfortable reading and writing the registers of the UART before we get into the next section, which will be the interrupt section. If you have any questions, remember you can email me at sumpyguy at gmail.com and I'll try and address those questions in future videos.